Okay, so today we're talking about loci in the complex plane. Loci is a word that often is intimidating to some students, hopefully not to yourself. But if it is, um, let me just reassure you, you've done some loci before. I uh, did loci in C2. Uh, you did it in the XY plane there, rather than the complex plane. I'm not sure the book will use the word loci or that your teacher would have used it or even focused on it because it's not that in crucial, that important. But um, let me just show what I mean so you can get a feel for the fact that this is something we've done before. So there's a, there's a loci. Do you recognise that equation as being the equation of a circle, right? In fact, we should know that we can find the centre. The centre is um, 1, 3, uh, the opposite of the sign given there, right? A bit like how you solve an equation, you end up getting factors which are the opposite. Um, and then the radius here is, is 4, the square root of 16. We can draw a picture of that. Uh, so we'd have centre 1, 3, so there'd be a 1 here, a 3 here. There's our centre at 1, 3. It's got a radius of 4, so 3 take 4 is minus 1. It goes just below this axis around like this. Beautiful circle. Uh, and this is in the x, y plane, right? And this set of points here is called a loci. In particular, a loci is a set of points which obey a certain rule. So this, these set of points here all obey this equation. They all... Um, make that equation work. For example, a point outside the loci, a point outside the circle, um, if you plug those x and y values into that equation, you'd find that this side it being more than 16, so that equation's not true, therefore it's not part of the loci. Similarly, you put that point in, you'd find those x and y coordinates plugged in there gives you less than 16. Again, the points on this equation, the only ones, the only x and y values would actually have to be equal to 16. Um, and that's what a loci is, points that obey a rule. You've done loci in FP1 as well. Um, you've done something along the lines of y squared equals 4x. Do you recognise what that is? Yeah, that's the equation of a parabola. So I can draw that down. It looks a bit like this. It's kind of like an x squared curve, but because you've got the y squared, it's on its side, right? It's more like a y squared curve. Um, you may know stuff about the focus and directrix and stuff like that. I'm not doing that today though. Um, so there's some examples of loci. Let's see what a complex loci looks like. So these were to do the XY planes, we use X and Y. A complex plane, we use the letter Z for the complex number. Um, so here's an example of what that could look like. There's a loci in a complex plane. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is to try and make it look more like a Cartesian equation that we're familiar with. Um, and the way we're going to do that is by remembering that Z is actually a real part, X, and a imaginary part, Y. Um, we're going to substitute this in here in a second. Before we do that, I do want to talk about what this modulus sign means, just in case there's any confusion. So you've done working out the modulus of Z before, but when you work out the modulus of a number that's complex, you take um, the real and imaginary parts of that complex number, you square the real part, you square the imaginary part, is it two there? and then you square root the answer. Now I know that's something you're familiar with doing, because you square the x bit, you square the y bit, and you square root it. The reason I mention it is because this one here is just slightly more complicated. The reason being is you've got a real part x in that z, but you've also got this real part minus one. So the first thing you have to do is combine those two together to give us the, the real part is one piece. Similarly, there's a y imaginary bit in there, and there's a minus three imaginary bit just here. We'll have to combine those as well. Um, so we start by taking the z and rewriting it as a real bit and an imaginary bit. And then we take the real parts and we take the imaginary parts and we write them separately. So these are imaginary because they've got eyes and these are real because they haven't got eyes. Uh, in this case we've got two real parts and two imaginary. It's not always the case. Like you could have one real part, two imaginary, or two real, one imaginary, or a combination. You could have three imaginary parts. The imaginary bits are the things with the eyes, that's the ending that matters. The real parts are the things without the eyes. We group them accordingly. Uh, to work out the modulus now we take the real bit and we square it and we take the imaginary bit 
and we square it. We're not squaring the i because we're doing the real power and imaginary power squared according to this formula. Uh, we're, not, we're not squaring the i, we're squaring the coefficient of the imaginary power. We then square root that, put equal to 4. So we're just following this formula up here. Uh, something we've done before, but now we're doing it with two, two parts and not just one number. Uh, ooh, see what we've, done? we've taken this complex loci that's new and perhaps confusing and awkward, and we've we've turned it into this, which is actually is a Cartesian equation in terms of x and y, something we're very familiar with using. Um, in fact, if I square this side, get rid of the square root, and square the other side to keep it uh, equal, um, we should recognise this. Oh yeah, look, that's the uh, equation of the circle we did at the beginning. Mm, it's almost like I planned it, isn't it? Yeah, so that means that this here is also um, the loci, the same one. It's a, the same circle with the same centre, 1 and 3, and the same radius, 4. In fact, you can see those numbers up here, can't you? That There's a 1 on the x-axis, that's the 1 there. There's a 3 for the imaginary pattern, that's the y-axis. Again, opposite the signs. That's just the same way as it is for the circle in CT. And then um, this 4 is just the radius, uh, whereas here you have to square root it. Here you don't because it's just equal to 4, and we squared it later on here, remember? We've got that modulus sign. So here is the centre and the radius. Um, so in general, we could write down a rule for what the loci of a circle is in the complex plane. It would be z, and then we'd have to have our centre, which is a complex number, so it could have two parts, or it could be one part. And that's equal to the radius, which is a real number. Um, so z is the x and, I, x and y bit. C is a complex number that's the centre, written in two parts, A and B. And R is a real number which is bigger than zero. Um, so C would be two parts, but maybe A and B are positive. There's our C value. Uh, then we've got a real number for our radius, which gives us our circle here. This is centred C. Um, should we see what that looks like? It's a couple of examples. Um, so... Here we've taken this and rewrote it in a Cartesian form, which is something you need to do. Um, we'll have to do a lot of um, in various questions and exam papers and in exercises. Uh, but I want to see whether, if I gave you that straight away, could we just jump to the end and just draw down what a circle would look like? A bit like over here, how we just skipped to drawing the circle without doing any kind of working out in between. Um, how would you do that? So here's an example for us to look at. So z minus 4 modulus equals 2. So here the 4 is our c, our complex number this case is just a normal real number. 4, still complex, right? Because the real numbers are inside the complex numbers. Um, we would find the centre. The centre here isn't minus 4, it's 4, always the opposite of that sign. And then the radius here is just 2. So it's going to be a little circle like that. Uh, 4 plus 2 would mean it goes through 6 there, and 4 minus 2 means it goes through... Two just there. Yeah, uh, we could work it out the same way. We'd find out that the equation of the circle would have to be, well, x minus four, and then y minus zero squared. So I'll just write this y squared, and the radius would be two. So two squared would be four. You find that that would become that by doing exactly the same process. Another example: z plus three i equal to one. This time we're looking at 3i, okay, but because it's in plus 3i, we want the minus 3i as being our centre. Our radius is 1, so we draw a tiny little circle. I'm just going to draw it slightly around that so I don't go through my number. Um, 1, so it goes through here at minus 2i and down here at minus 4i. Um, again, I want to write the Cartesian way. If we did the whole computation properly, we'd find we got out at the end x, well, there's no real part, so x minus 0 squared, which is x squared. Um, and then we do y plus 3 squared. That would be the bit from here. And that would be equal to 1 squared, which is 1. Again, to show that properly, we'd have to go through this process. So I'm jumping to the end. Um, we can't do that in exams. We ask you to show the equation. You've got to show all the steps. Just one last comment about why this is working. Um, this line here is actually z minus c. And we're saying here that that z minus c is a z length r. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about what I mean when we discuss the next type of loci. So something for you to look forward to next time. For now, practice drawing your curves and converting your z's into x's plus i y's. Um, see you now.